this is an interesting question, but let us me give me a mythological answer. Now, in the Middle Eastern mythologies, there is an obsession with one God, one life, one prophet, singularity. Indian mythology loves diversity, plurality. So many gods, many, many ideas, many saints, many ways of thinking. We have always been a land which appreciates diversity and dynamism. So there is a Middle Eastern concept of singularity and there is an Indian concept of plurality. So when somebody says we should have only one name, one idea, one thought, one language, they're really drifting towards Middle East, which is the mother of Western civilization, right? I think India should retain its identity and celebrate plurality. And therefore, our gods, we have many gods and every god has many names. Uh, so, you, you know, you have Shiva, Shiva, it can be called Shankar, can be called Bholenath. We have Vishnu who can be called Narayan. So I think we belong to a land which celebrates diversity. We should not follow the Middle Eastern path. This is my personal view. Um, so the question about India, the origins of the name India, and I, you know, you use this word native, indic, this is foreign, this suggestion. So the word India is derived from a Sanskrit word called Sindhu. Sindhu means a river. Very specifically, it refers to the river that passes across India for several hundred kilometers before entering Pakistan. From Sindhu comes the name Sindhadesha. Now, the Arabs cannot pronounce sir, so they started using the word her. So, so Sapta Sindhu became Hapta Hindu. Uh, Sindha became Hind. And uh, 2,500 years ago, we have the Persian king referring to India as Hind. The Greeks come to India, they can't say her, they say a, e. So, Indu, Indus, Indica. So, Megasthenes writes the book uh, Indica, but he's really referring to the word Sindhu. So, the origin of the word India comes from the Sanskrit word Sindhu. Sindh, Hind, Ind. Sindhu, Hindu, Indu, Indus. In fact, the word Indu means the moon and is the name of Ramchandra's grandmother. So Ram, who established Ram Rajya, his father was Dashrath. His, uh, fa his father, his grandfather, uh, that is uh, Dashrath's father was Aja, who was married to Indumati. So maybe India comes from Indu, Indumati, Indus, Sindhu. So it's a very Indian sounding name. So uh, we have associated it with the Greeks. Some people think it's the British, not really. That's really unusual educated people say such things, but it's not even the Greeks. It's really a Sanskrit word from the Rig Veda, Sindhu, which gives us India. Um, yeah, so people have been asking me about Bharat. So uh, the word Bharat comes from the word Bharat. And uh, Bharat, the name first comes from the Rig Veda. You have Bharata, uh, king of the Bharata clan, winning the battle of 10 kings in the Rig Veda. We don't know much about them. Now, Rig Veda happens only in the Kurukshetra region. Um, then you have the Mahabharata epic, again, uh, talking about the Bharata clan. And again, it happens only in the northern part of India. Kuru Panchala region is roughly what is today Delhi, Mathura, um, up to Prayagraj. That, that's the zone. Uh, the first time the word Bharat Varsha is carved in stone, it is about 2100 years ago in Odisha, in the Hatigumpa um, uh, caves, you find this name Bharat Varsha, but it's referring to only the Gangetic region, west of Magad. So it doesn't refer to the whole of India. So Bharat word really is a word which refers to certain parts of North India. Bharat Varsha refers to certain parts of North India. It's, um, you know, and uh, it is a name given by Brahmins. So, it you know, whenever people say Bharat, 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 Khanda, Bharat, Varsha, these are really coming from Brahmin sources, Vedas, Puranas, Dharma Shastras, something like Arya Desha, the land of Aryans. So Bharata is the king of the Aryans, the victorious kings of the Aryans. So it's a very North Indian Brahminical word that emerged. Um, and one must remember that. The, there's another Bharat, of course, very famous from the Jain traditions, who is the son of Rishabhadev, the first Tirthankara. And Bharat is the first Chakravarti. And I believe that it 
probably the word Bharat really comes from the Jain traditions, but we don't value Jain traditions. Remember, Jainism was very powerful at one time, um, but it was driven out of many parts of India, like Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. So uh, really, the Bharata Chakravarti would have been known in South India in a very, very big way. Um, North Indian Bharat perhaps comes from Brahmin traditions, and the South Indian Bharat perhaps comes from Jain traditions. So, you know, we have to think about these things which... Um, uh, we usually don't, we don't teach these things in history, right? The Jain Bharata, who is a Chakravarti uh, from South India, maybe, the, you know, he visits his brother Bahubali statues in the South India. Um, so we have to think about these characters also. I don't think that the word Bharat comes from, Bharat comes from India and in India comes from foreigners. That's not a conclusion. That's your conclusion. That's a political conclusion. And that comes from Chanakya Niti of divide and rule. You know, Sam, Dam, Danda, Bhed. Uh, but uh, India comes from the word Sindhu, which is a Vedic word. Uh, Bharat comes from Bharat, which is also found in the Vedas. Bharat also comes from Bharat, which is a Jain word. So we must be aware that the word Sindhu was called Hindu by Persians and Hindu by Greeks, but they didn't give us the word. It comes from an Indian river, a Vedic river called Sindhu. So, you, you know, uh, the Brahmins of India, you know, the Brahman of Johar, they have controlled the literature of our land, right? So Aryans, the word Arya comes from Brahmins, but the Jains and the Buddhists look at Aryans very differently compared to the Hindus. So we must be careful of the Brahmin use of the word Bharat and appropriation from the Jain traditions. Right? They are appropriating it from the Jain traditions, one can argue. Uh, but the word Sindhu is a Vedic word and India comes from Sindhu. So this internal, external, it's again, it's a, again Brahminical, right? Uh, it's a caste thing, right? What is internal is pure. What is external is malecha, is impure. And the impure people should be kept out the way untouchables were kept out. The untouchables were kept out of our villages. So we should be, we should not celebrate this mindset. It's not healthy. This is a very Brahmin caste mindset that internal things, andar ki cheeze, kotiyad ki andar rakho, uske bahar ullangan, you know, Sita cross the Lakshman Rekha and therefore becomes impure. Outside is bad inside is good um, not a healthy mindset I think we are a plural country we allow things to come in you know uh, potatoes have come from outside and we celebrate potatoes horses have come from outside and we celebrate Aryans came from outside and we call ourselves Arya Desha so um, you know we should just allow internal what is in you know everybody came from Africa so we are all technically genetically African so I think these are, but then politicians know better than scholars. We are like, we are mythologists as scholars. Hai. Those, you know, unke hath mein talwar hai, you know, those who have the sword are far more powerful than those with a pen, right? And the Brahmins know this too. Yes, changing names is something that politicians do when, you know, when you're, we don't give ourselves names, right? Our parents give us names, elders give us names, teachers give us names. And then when do we change our names? When we change our religion. When you change your religion, you change your name. When you become a sannyasi, you give change your name. So uh, I think uh, that is where the mindset, changing religion, this conversion idea is what leads us to deny ourselves. You know, the greatest countries in the world have multiple names. Germany is called Deutschland. China is not called China by the Chinese. The local people call it a very different name. Uh, Bhutan is called very differently. The Bhutanese call Bhutan uh, Drukyul, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you know, all great civilization, we say Egypt, but the Arabs and call it Misr. So great civilizations have different names because different people have engaged with it. I guess we don't want to be a great civilization. We want to follow the Middle Eastern path of monotheism, one idea, one thought. We'd, we hate our plurality. We see alternate ideas as polluting, which is a Brahminical caste mindset. Um, I guess that's the path we want to walk. And I think... Uh, that's an option. Sanatan Dharma is a very complex topic. Uh, 
it can mean many things you know i i can call it a philosophical thing which is timeless truths i can mean political which is caste some so when i'm talking about caste people will talk about pol philosophy in those who are talking about philosophy will talk about caste politicians do that they deliberately misunderstand other people because that gets them votes so it is uh, part of rajneeti it's part of politics it's not part of scholarship uh, sanatan dharma is about uh, seeking the soul and when you seek the soul you appreciate diversity and dynamism you allow india to be india and bharat and hindustan uh, whatever people wanted to be and you work on helping people grow materially i would rather we work on rich people being more generous rather than changing names which is changing names is easy making rich people generous is tougher so lazy people focus on easy tasks and truly spiritual first people will focus on tough things like making rich people generous Thank you.